everyone and welcome back to Bloom Home and Garden and if you are new thank you for stopping by the farmhouse and welcome now would be a great time to click subscribe and click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I will be sharing my name is Kim I live in an 1860s brick farmhouse that we are renovating I love projects and have them all over and I love to keep things from going to the landfill. I love sharing my garden and my chickens with you. I love sharing my natural simple life with you. Today we're in the garden and I want to talk about mums. I want to clear up some confusion about their names or their varieties. I want to share with you how to get long lasting blooms and encourage a second bloom. When we're out shopping for mums, we hear all kinds of names. There are three varieties that come to mind, it can be a little confusing. First of all, mum is short for the flower chrysanthemum. And chrysanthemums are most widely known for floral arrangements. Whenever you get an arrangement delivered, most of the flowers in it are most likely chrysanthemums because they are beautiful and elegant and they are very inexpensive. In recent years, they started taking those floral mums and combining them with perennial mums, giving us a hardy garden mum. So those are the terms that flow around and they can be confusing. A garden mum is just a chrysanthemum that grows outside or in your garden. That is a garden mum in comparison to a floral mum. Hardy just means that that floral mum can be outside. A perennial mum is one specifically grown to be planted outside and enjoyed in your landscape. That is what we truly think of when we think of a hardy mum. Now getting these garden mums to come back every year is a little difficult because of their cross breeding. There are a couple of tricks if you would like your mums to come back every year that will help you encourage them to come back, although there's no guarantee that it will. If you are looking for your mums to return, you're gonna look for a perennial mum, and they're pretty hard to find. While at Lowe's the other day, they weren't labeled as perennial mums, but the care tag did say that for the first year, we'll keep them moist and then water weekly every year after. So I would assume that that meant that it was a perennial mum. You might want to call ahead to your garden center just to check to see if they are perennial mums. Or in the future, you might request that they order perennial mums for you. Trick to getting these garden mums to come back every year is to get them in the ground as soon as possible so that they can establish a hardy root system so that when the cold temperatures come, their roots are buried deep in the ground and they're not frozen too soon and risk the chance of not coming back. That's the number one tr trick is to get them in the ground as soon as possible. When we're purchasing our standard garden mum, it is best to treat it as an annual. This particular mum states right on its label that it is an annual mum. And that it, it, even though it is of hardy variety, it is still an annual. A little tip about mums is they don't like to get their flowers wet. That causes their flowers to fade and be limp. So when you're watering them, be sure to water underneath the flowers. That will keep your bloom strong and colorful. Additionally, if it's going to be raining, you might want to bring your mums in for cover if you can. If it's going to be cold and you're going to have a heavy dew or a frost, bring them into a garage or your porch or somewhere like that where they can keep their flowers dry. It's going to prolong the life of their flower. So you've bought your mums only partially open to get longer blooms. You've kept your flowers dry and watered only from the bottom. But eventually, your mum is still going to look like this one. I know many of you like to buy your mums when they're bright and cheery and open in September, and I do too, but does that mean that you only get one bloom per season? Thankfully, no. Once your mum has come to this state, there is something that you can do to make sure that you get that second bloom. And I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. 
me show you in here when we start parting these flowers back you can see in here these little bitty blooms they're buried underneath the flowers the flowers are shading them and they're taking up the energy that these little blooms need so we've got to get rid of these flower heads So all we need is a good pair of trimmers or a sharp pair of scissors for this and you just part the plant very carefully and I just take each flower by the head and pull it back so I can see and get in there and make my cut. I try to cut all the way back to the crotch. I just check each stem to make sure that there's no new buds on it. See that one has a little bud right there so I'm going to be very careful to avoid that but I am going to cut off the spent flower. See, the spent flower was in between those two buds, so I left the buds but cut off the flower. When I'm cutting, I like to go as far back in there as I can and see this little stem here. I like to keep the stems that I cut off further back than the buds so that the stems are not sticking out bare with nothing on them and no leaves. I want to keep them tucked down in there as far as possible. Now that I've cleared a lot of the spent flowers away, you can see just how many, many little blooms there are. There are dozens. And with the spent blooms before, you would have never known that many little blooms were in there. And of course, they're providing shade and taking up the energy and the nutrients and the water. Even though they're spent and they're not coming back, they still take up all those things that the new flowers might need. These would never have gotten a chance to bloom had we left the plant the way it was. So that's why it's so important to trim this back so all those can start blooming. Here, I'm just going to clip off the flower heads and instead of going down into the crotch like I was showing you before I want to show you the difference between those deep trims down in there and just the flower heads. you see here how we just have just these bare stems sticking out not very attractive and that is why we go deeper into the plant to cut off the flower them all trimmed up and you can see how much better it looks and look at all the hundreds of little flowers that are going to bloom now that we've gotten rid of all those spent flowers that energy can go into those little buds and I assure you in a couple of days these are going to start popping you can also see with trimming back in there and getting those stems further back in there it just creates this nice round habit for your plant making it look so much more appealing well friends, that is it for this video. I hope you learned something new about mums on how to select perennials or annuals and get them growing for you. I hope you learned how to preserve those beautiful blooms and encourage more big flowers to enjoy throughout the season. If you learned something new, give this video a thumbs up. I'd love to hear you down in the comments. What is your favorite color? Of mum is it yellow is it rust is it burgundy is it pink or are you a white mum lover let me know in the comments everyone be blessed be safe and I'll see you soon